This American millionaire was friends with Teddy Roosevelt and taught Marines to kill in World War II. Mr. Millionaire Anthony Joseph Drexel Biddle Sr. was an eccentric millionaire and an amateur boxer. He was also a pioneer of bayonet and hand-to-hand -hand combat training in the US Marine Corps based on his training in the sport of fencing. He began his career with the Marine Corps as a bayonet instructor in World War I. Interestingly, Biddle was also a promoter of W.E. Fairburn's Defendu system after World War I. He went on to instruct US Marines and FBI agents in use of the bayonet, knife and hand-to-hand -hand fighting through to the end of World War II. Biddle was friends with Teddy Roosevelt and led just as interesting a life. As an amateur boxer, the bold, mustachioed millionaire fought under the name of Tim O'Biddle. The great Ruby Bob Fitzsimmons called him one of the best amateur fighters he ever saw. Training Gene Tunney An article in the New York Times, February 15, 1942, reported that during World War I, Biddle set up a camp on his family estate at Lansdowne, Pennsylvania and was successful in training around 4,000 men for the US Army and Marines. His system then, as later, was based on long hours of calisthenics and gymnastics to harden the recruits for the rigours of advanced hand-to-hand -hand combat training. When he thought his men ready, Colonel Biddle would instruct them in the use of the machete, sabre, dagger, bayonet and hand grenade. He also taught them techniques of jiu-jitsu and the French kickboxing system of savate. The fighting marine, Gene Tunney, took his first boxing lessons from Biddle. In the interwar period, Biddle continued to study combatives and teach marines, and interestingly began teaching FBI recruits also. Amazingly, he managed to find the time to write several notable books on the subject of combatives. Come on, kill me! Upon the arrival of World War II, Colonel Biddle now a still sprightly 67, was once again summoned to help train US Army, Marine and Airborne recruits the fundamentals of close combat fighting. A June 1942 article on Biddle in Yank magazine narrated several incidents that revealed something of Biddle's training methods, one of which I loosely quote here. Come on now, kill me, said Biddle one day as a group of his Marine recruits nervously grasped the bayonets they were being instructed in. Moments later, a Marine, lying on his back after Biddle's lightning-fast demonstration of unarmed jiu-jitsu, stated that, quote, That old geezer knows more ways to kill you with his bare hands than any man alive. In another episode taken from the same Yank magazine article related above, the reporter Lloyd Shearer states that only one man ever succeeded in getting his blade into Biddle. But in fact, the old man had been wounded numerous times during his decades of buoy and bayonet sparring. In her book, My Philadelphia Father, Colonel Biddle's daughter Cordelia said that her father had 23 wounds in his chest and abdomen, and that his forearms were covered with scars. An article from 1929 reported a knife wound Biddle suffered in the left arm while training troops. Again, the Yank article reported a further encounter this time between Biddle and a veteran sergeant. Quote, now, come running at me with your bayonet, he ordered, and go for my throat. The sergeant wet his lips. He clenched his gun and lunged full speed at the colonel's neck. Colonel Anthony J. Drexel Biddle, who knows more about bayonets, knives and jiu-jitsu than any other man, parried the thrust with his own bayonet. Before the sergeant could mumble, holy smoke, Biddle had his own bayonet alongside the sergeant's throat, and the big book was sweating. That's how it's done, the colonel said. Now let's all try it. Yet another anecdote about Biddle from Yank that perhaps illustrated Biddle's kill or be killed mentality went like this, quote, When I come across a man who looks as if he might hesitate to use the knife on the enemy, I tell him, Son, when you meet a Jap in battle, say to him real fast, How is your dear old mother? Then cut his throat. Does that help any? Don't know exactly, replied the colonel, but it's good for the conscience, especially on Mother's Day. Bayonet fighting. 
One of Biddle's most notable books on combatives is his title Do or Die, first published in 1937 and revised in 1944. He outlines his system of bayonets and knife fighting in there, and interestingly the revised edition of 1944 demonstrates Biddle's evolution in thinking as he changed the bayonet knife fighting emphasis from the thrust to the slash. As in the intro, quote, The author now directs to slash at the throat instead of thrusting with the point. Revealingly, in the introduction to the knife fighting instructional in part two of this book, Biddle advises a student to go for the hand, to, quote, ply the hand cut and slash at the hand in a similar fashion as to how a skilled epee fencer or duelist will be trained to. He writes thus, quote, the hand cut is particularly prescribed for use with a bayonet as knife, and is an exquisitely scientific movement taken from the sword and known to few others than scientific swordsmen. The skilled epee fencer or duelist thrusts at the sword hand or arm of an opponent. The scienced broad swordsman cuts or thrusts at the sword hand or arm. Furthermore, quote, in fact with a quick cut to the opponent's knife holding hand, it is possible for the bayonet thus used to disarm several in a group of attacking knifemen. Biddle goes on to illustrate his advice by telling a story of two marine aviators that utilised his knife science when confronted by 20 odd machete armed men in 1920s Nicaragua, hand cutting their opponents and thus defeating them. Legacy Colonel Anthony Biddle's system of combatives is preserved through his published books, several key titles still being available on Amazon today. His system utilising calisthenics for strength and endurance training of recruits through to his more advanced martial training that mixed bayonet fighting, knife fighting, boxing, French savate, jiu-jitsu and judo was unique in that it was used through both world wars in the USA. His training methods were in some ways similar to W.E. Fairbairn's, a peer he admired, and other famed instructors of the interwar and World War II periods such as Francois d'Elisqueu and Pat O'Neill, for example. And of course there are echoes of his and these other great trainers' methods remaining still in current combatives courses in Ranger, Marine and Airborne training schools in the USA and around the world. Colonel Anthony Biddle died in 1948 at age 73. His son, Tony, would go on to become a lieutenant colonel in the US Army in World War II and the US Ambassador to Spain in 1961. We hope you enjoyed this short documentary. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. Thank you.